Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Friday, September the 8th and boy do we have a hurricane to talk about in the Atlantic Ocean. Fortunately, it does not appear that will be, it will be affecting us whatsoever other than some strong rip currents, swells, and large breakers for all of next week, the way it's shaping up along the uh, coast of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and matter of fact, all the way up the east coast of the United States. But let's take a look at the satellite imagery, and there it is right there. And that is Hurricane Lee with 155 mile per hour winds down a little bit from earlier this morning when it was at 165. And there is Margo Whale over there to the east. I'm not too concerned about Margo, but let's zoom in a little bit, first of all, into um, Lee at this time. And there it is to the east, northeast of the Windward Islands, mostly east, uh, yeah, east, northeast of the Windward Islands. And uh, it, it looks like it's undergoing some eye replacement right now. And um, th that's a cycle it goes through. When it does that, the wind speeds usually de decrease a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in one more notch here. And um, I wanna show you something here. This purple and white area here is lightning flashes. And a lot of times when you have the eye replacement cycle going through, uh, you see lightning developing uh, in that area. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Usually you don't see too much lightning inside of a hurricane, uh, but where you have the eye replacement going on, that's where you do see the lightning. And we're seeing the lightning, hence eye replacement uh, is going on. Let's see if I can take a visual picture of this right now and uh, uh, go into channel two, which is the high resolution uh, visible light. And we're starting to come into sunset over there. But there, the eye has filled in uh, with some high cirrus and middle level clouds because of this eye replacement cycle that's going on right now. But a new eye is trying to deform right there. And there you can see it right there. And, and, and that's where that lightning is coming from for that overshooting dome right there in that area of the storm. So let's move on and look at the National Hurricane Center map uh, page and their maps. There's Margo and there's Lee. Nothing to worry about with Margo. Margo is going to be moving off toward the north uh, and stay well, well to the east of us. It will become a hurricane, but it looks like maybe a category one or category two type storm, but well off to the east, just staying in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, what we call a fish storm, only affecting the fish and perhaps some shipping lanes, uh, but that's about it. But uh, the, the um, elephant in the room, of course, is Lee. And uh, Lee is... Uh, going to be moving to the west northwest over the next several days and then eventually it's going to make a curve off to the north but it is over here in some very very warm sea surface temperatures and look at these temperatures out here here's where the storm is right here and those water temperatures are in the mid to upper 80s in some cases near 90 degrees that is the energy supply that a hurricane taps into and as long as it's over this with no very little wind shear aloft, the storm will just continue to stay strong or grow stronger. It won't grow too much stronger from where it is right now. It might, after this eye replacement uh, cycle is finished, it might get back up to about 165, even 170 miles per hour. And then as it continues to go to the west northwest, it, it just stays right in this very warm water. Now, when it begins to curve to the north, it'll encounter some little bit cooler waters, but then it hits the Gulf Stream right back into the mid to upper 80s once again. Now, there is an indication that the storm, as it moves across these very warm waters, uh, will um, move further northward east of um, New York City uh, and just east of Boston. But uh, looking at the water temperatures in that area, there you can see it begins to drop off considerably, but not until you get east of New York City and Philadelphia and around the Boston area before the waters cool off. Now, there's an indication that the storm might move into the Bay of Fundy. Uh, right over here around um, uh, New Brunswick and uh, New, New Brunswick and Newfoundland, uh, perhaps. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the uh, the models right now. And this is the uh, the United States model of the GFS, and let's put this into motion. There, you can see uh, the storm moving very slowly to the west northwest. It looks like it might be a threat to us, but then it begins to encounter this. Uh, there's a big trough developing over here. Uh, to the uh, west of the storm. Right now, uh, there's an opening we call a weakness uh, to the west of the storm. That'll allow the storm to start turning more toward the north and be pushed more to the north. And there it goes. And as it goes off to the north, there you can see it goes right in toward the upper portions of the New England states, uh, just east of the New England states and Boston. Boston might get clipped by this storm. 
uh, very high waves and seas also in the New York and New Jersey area. And then it moves in toward the Bay of Fundy. Now there goes Margo over there. And uh, let's look at a, another regional map, Southeast Canada, there it is. All right, let's take a look at the uh, forecast uh, for that area. And there it is right there. Um, this is next week. Uh, uh, the, the date on here is um, Friday at sunset, <laughs> a week from today. So this storm's gonna be out there for a while. And there you can see, it looks like it's gonna be moving right into the uh, uh, Newfoundland area and New Brunswick. Uh, there is the Bay of Fundy right there. And uh, uh, that will, be very devastating for uh, the Canadian uh, provinces out there, maritime provinces, and then moving in toward the Nova Scotia area over here. Um, there we can see it passing it with very strong winds. And there goes Margo well off to the east of them as well. Now looking at the Canadian model, there you can see the storm coming up and moving just to the uh, east of the Bay of Fundy, right over uh, Newfoundland uh, to the east of New Brunswick and heading toward Nova Scotia. So that's where that storm is going to be. And it's wound up like a wristwatch out there. So it's going to have some very devastating effects if this pans out. This is now, you know, a week and 10 day, a week and two days away from now. See this, this time frame here is at uh, Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, eight days from now. So uh, this is uh, going to be a slow moving storm. One of the things I do want to talk about uh, is this is a good time to talk about it is the hurricane wind scale or the Saffir Simpson wind scale. So let's take a look at that. Just go on to my web page. You can just click on that map and uh, that shows you the categories of hurricanes uh, and the damage that they could produce and the uh, uh, the wind velocities and the barometric pressure associated with these type storms. Of course, category one hurricane uh, is a hurricane. It can do quite a bit of damage, get roof damage and uh, tree uh, damage. Uh, some power outages will be associated with a category one storm. Category two, you got uh, the winds uh, getting up to about 100 uh, miles an hour to 110 miles an hour. Uh, there you see the barometric pressure dropping to uh, uh, 979 to 966 millibars and then the structural you, uh, damage starts becoming more uh, evident and uh, you start seeing more widespread power outages. Now one of the reasons why a category 3 storm is uh, listed as a major hurricane because its wind speeds of 111 to 129 miles per hour is where the well the structural damage is immense because uh, wood driven in with nails, mostly you know, mostly wood frame homes uh, driven in with nails. Uh, the nails start failing at about 115 miles per hour. That's when the nails no longer can hold the wood together. And when you have winds above 115 miles per hour, that's where you start seeing the winds uh, start uh, tearing the houses apart, and you start seeing devastating damages uh, with the Category Three type hurricane, and of course with that extended power outages. So if you uh, are in an area that is experiencing uh, or had experienced a Category Three hurricane, the power will be out for several days. Now Category Four, like a Hurricane Hugo, oh my gosh, uh, you're going to get winds of 130 to 156 miles an hour. I mean that's incredible. It's hard to fathom that wind speed. Uh, but you're going to see catastrophic damage, a direct hit with a Category 3. And uh, with that, you're going to have power out for a, for weeks at a time, perhaps. And also Category 5, um, very rare, but they do happen. Uh, winds greater than 157 miles an hour, up to well, the maximum 200 miles an hour. The uh, area hit by a Category 5 hurricane will have... Uh, areas that will be uninhabitable for weeks and power, no power for weeks to months even uh, in these type hurricanes. Maria uh, um, in the uh, Puerto Rico area, uh, there you know, were out power in several locations for months and months, and even some year, a year or so after the hurricane, people still had no power. So you, uh, you got category one, two, three, four, and five. And not to mention the storm surge associated with it. I didn't even talk about the storm surge here, uh, but that's something else you need to consider, the, uh, the water. When you have a storm surge, you add that storm surge to your tide data. So let's say, for example, uh, we have a Category 3 hurricane uh, that has a storm surge of uh, 10 feet. Now, it doesn't sound like very much, but what if you have a tide of 8 feet? Uh, then you have you add the storm surge to the tide, so 8 plus 10 would be 18 feet of water coming in 
Uh, in most areas, perhaps, in, for, uh, for example, in Chatham County, uh, are only about, on the average, 15 to 20 feet above sea level. Now, downtown Savannah is a little bit higher, about 35 to 55 feet above sea level. But most of the uh, city of Savannah and the islands are only about 15 feet to 20 feet above sea level. So you can figure uh, an 18 foot tide coming in, you're going to have a lot of locations underwater. So. Um, you know, these hurricanes, uh, you, you got to not take them lightly. You got to take them very seriously. But fortunately for us, uh, this hurricane, Hurricane Lee, uh, does not look like it's going to be affecting us whatsoever. Other than, again, with the strong uh, rip currents, the deadly and dangerous rip currents that will be associated with our area beaches for all of next week. And the uh, large breakers, which will start generating uh, uh, beach erosion. And of course, you're going to have the swells uh, that will be coming in uh, along the coastal waters. And if you're going to be out shrimping or deep sea fishing, uh, that's that's going to really rock the boat badly. But weather-wise for us, we're going to see uh, kind of like decent weather. Uh, we might see some scattered thunderstorms. That's from a front coming in. Actually, that front is protecting us from the hurricane. Uh, that's going to uh, help push that hurricane to the east and north of us. Uh, but that will also give us a chance for showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, 60% probability, 50% chance on Sunday, and then dropping down to 30 and 20% Monday and Tuesday, back to 30 and 40% for the middle of next week. But all in all, and temperatures in the 80s, instead of those mid to upper 90s in the 80s, and lows perhaps dropping into the low 70s to uh, mid to upper 60s by the end of next week after that hurricane passes well to the east of us. So um, continue watching Hurricane Lee. I'll continue to watch it as well for you on my website, savannapat.name. Uh, you can get all this great weather information. You can uh, click on this. I think I'll, uh, um, uh, on this um, uh, map here, I think I'll add the storm surge uh, values to it as well. So I'll, I'll update that later tonight and tomorrow uh, for you. So, uh, so keep watching and thanks for watching me on my uh, Weather and Nature channel right here on YouTube. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, with that, um, enjoy the weather that we have because it's nothing like it could be if that hurricane was anywhere near us. Thanks for watching. Bye.